welcome back to Bold Books and Bones. If you follow this channel, then you know that I'm a psychologist. What you might not know is that studying psychology was, at least in hindsight, an important decision in my life. I was in some way a troubled teenager, and by learning about human psychology, I started to understand myself a bit better. And I also could make more sense of the environment in which I grew up. I don't say that studying psychology solves all of your problems, not at all, but in my case it was one part of the puzzle to become a more balanced young man and it helped me in my 20s to create the beginning of a good professional life. In this episode I like to share with you some of my favorite psychology books. Both of them have profoundly influenced my thinking and I apply many of the concepts that are explained in them in my daily work. The first one is called The Lucifer Effect and the subtitle reads Why Good People Turn Bad. It is a topic that I find very intriguing because I have several times witnessed how power starts to corrupt people. In most of the cases that I witnessed, it starts in a subtle way, with little things, where they begin to lose their moral compass. And if there is no one to correct them, things gradually become worse. This is one of the reasons why I want to understand what the dynamics are that can change people so rapidly. It is a remarkable book, because it is the true story of a psychologist who conducted an experiment about the misuse of power and who was sucked into the dynamics of his own experiment and he became even one of the abusers. The experiment is called the Stanford Prison Experiment and it is probably known by every psychologist because it is one of the classical experiments in social psychology. The book is written by the very psychologist who conducted the experiment and his name is Philippe Zimbardo. It all took place in the summer of 1971 and there has been a lot written about this experiment ever since. There is even a movie about it which you can find on Apple TV. The book that I hold here and that was written by Philippe Zimbardo was only published for the first time in 2007. Now, why were there so many years between the experiment that took place in 1971 and the release of this book? Well, it is because Zimbardo felt that only after so many years of studying evil, he had the maturity to understand and to tell what really happened more than 30 years ago during the experiment. Additionally, in 2004 there were horrible stories that got global attention. It were, of course, the stories of the torturing that took place in the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. And also this motivated Zimbardo to act and to share what he knew at the time about human nature. This book not only retells the full story of the experiment in a level of detail that I never read anywhere else before, but it also explains the psychological dynamics that apparently can make almost every human being vulnerable to do evil deeds. His starting point is that most people do good most of the time, but there are three forces of power that can shape our behavior and influence the way we act. First, there is personal power. Second, there is the power of circumstances. And finally, there are the systemic powers in a community. The systemic power is in many cases the one that we are maybe the least aware of because it are the implicit and explicit rules in your community, being it at your job, your school, your neighborhood or your country. We might believe 
that we would stand up to bullies, protect others, would never get involved in cases of financial corruption and so on. However, it is reasonable to state that most of us know ourselves from how we behave in known or in regular circumstances. But what happens if these circumstances become not so regular anymore and the personal, circumstantial and systemic powers create a negative or even toxic atmosphere in a community? What would each one of us do then? And that is the essential question that Philip Simbardo asks us to keep in mind while we are reading this book and why we learn about the Stanford Prison Experiment. To me, this book is particularly valuable because Simbardo also explains in an easy-to-understand way why people might fall for circumstantial or systemic forces that could harm others or harm themselves. And most importantly, he also writes about what we can do about it to prevent this from happening. I must say it is a confrontational read, but highly educational, if we want to avoid to be sucked into a corrupt community or into a toxic team. And this starts with educating ourselves on how good people can turn bad. The second psychology book is focusing on a topic that is so essential to everyone's life because it gives us insights into how we make decisions and how we judge situations. Think about how essential that is to your and to my life. We make so many decisions, small and big, every day, and this creates consequences for us. Some are good and some are not so good. But what if we could better understand how we do this? And what if we could learn how to avoid or at least significantly reduce judgments and decisions that are not good for us? This book is exactly about that. It is called Thinking Fast and Slow and it is written by the psychologist Daniel Kahneman. Now, what is a first a remarkable fact about the author is that he got the Nobel Prize for Economics. And why is that? Because a Nobel Prize for Psychology does not exist and because his work is relevant for almost every social science. So it is definitely also relevant for economics. Another question we could ask ourselves is why is the book called Thinking Fast and Slow? Well, it is because, in the view of Kahneman and others, our brains have two so-called systems to judge situations. One way works fast and is operated by what Kahneman calls System 1. For example, if I ask you right now the following question and listen carefully, am I a man or a woman? What would you say? You have probably experienced how fast you could answer the question correctly. By just looking at me, you could make a snap judgment. But watch what happens now. If I ask you, how much is 2 to the power of 16? Go, just speak it out. Do you have the answer? Well, if you are like most people and if you are like me, you don't have the answer right away. At this moment, you probably experience that you can't make a snap judgment about it, or at least not a snap judgment that is accurate. However, if I would give you just a couple of minutes, then you would find the answer, because you remember from school how, it, how this works, or you would Google the procedure to calculate the correct answer. This is because our brains would need our so-called System 2 to solve this problem. System 2 differs significantly from System 1 because it works slower, it demands deliberation and effort, and it works in an orderly way, and it needs you to concentrate. 
You know this feeling when you are driving a car or you are riding a bike on an empty street and everything goes smooth. And you can even have a conversation with someone else while you are driving. In this case, your system one is enough to judge the traffic situation. However, if the traffic becomes suddenly more intense and you see, let's say, the blue lights of a police car in front of you, now your system two kicks in and you stop your conversation because your brain needs to deliberately judge the situation in front of you and you take a decision on what to do given these new circumstances. This book describes at length how System 1 and System 2 works and it illustrates through countless experiments what this might mean for us when we make big or small decisions as business leaders, as parents, as friends or as members of a community. The second thing I found remarkable about this book, next to the author winning the Nobel Prize, is that Daniel Kahneman is able to explain to his readers in an easy to understand way how we humans make judgments and decisions. I admire it when scientists like Daniel Kahneman, who spent almost a lifetime studying a subject, are also able to explain their research to normal mortals like you and me so that we can understand and can apply this knowledge in our own lives. This to me is science at its best, because then it can serve a wide variety of people and it is not the kind of science that is only accessible to a few people working in an academic institute. So in five chapters, Daniel Kahneman takes us on a mental walk to learn about potential errors in our judgment. For example, there is the availability bias, meaning that if you only use uh, Facebook feeds to obtain information about the world and your Facebook page is consistently filled up with certain kind of negative and disturbing information, for example, if you would see and read every day in the news outlet that you consult that smokers are potential killers and you would read and see on a daily and hourly basis articles of so-called witnesses and so-called experts who confirm this information, even if this information is total nonsense, you and I would very likely use this information to take decisions in our own life. Because this is the only information that is available to us. Hence the word availability bias. If this information is wrong and we base our decisions for our business or for our life on it, it could bring us into serious trouble. Especially in the last five years we saw and unfortunately continue to see plenty of deliberate misinformation campaigns in Europe, in the US and around the world. By systematically pushing a certain type of information via algorithms that are used by different platforms, many people are misled and start to believe lies and fake news and this influenced their voting and other behavior. To avoid the availability bias, we have to make sure that we have access to different information sources and to reliable information sources. In short, Kahneman's book can help us to stay free and think for ourselves and make well-founded decisions when we make, for example, career choices or we are considering to marry someone or we want to avoid that we are misled by deceptive information during an election year. Voilà, these are the psychology books that I wanted to share for now. If you would be interested in more episodes about psychology books that I find interesting because I use their content in my work and in my life in general, then please let me know by leaving a comment or via Bold Books and Bones on Instagram.
Hope you enjoyed this episode and hope to see you soon at Bold Books and Bones. In the meantime, please stay curious and stay free. Bye for now.